Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about equilibrium in the aggregate demand aggregate supply model and explain to you why it's stable. In other words, why we think there's a built-in tendency for the economy to self-correct or move back to a long-run equilibrium. So let's start off by talking about a short-run equilibrium. That's real simple. Short-run equilibrium is going to occur whenever an aggregate demand curve intersects your short-run aggregate supply curve. That determines the price level. You know, we're, in economics, where two lines intersect, it's important. For us, we'll label that point A. So the average price level is up here, and real GDP is down here. OK, great. Now, what distinguishes the short-run equilibrium from a long-run equilibrium? Well, a short-run equilibrium is any equilibrium that occur. A short-run equilibrium exists wherever a short-run aggregate supply curve intersects the aggregate demand curve. So wherever those curves intersect, that's your e short-run equilibrium, and that determines the price level and the level of output. However, if you remember back to the long-run aggregate supply curve, in the long run, real GDP equals potential. So if it just so happens that this level of output is equal to potential, then we'll have a vertical long-run aggregate supply curve at that level of output. And so all three curves will intersect at point A. That's a long-run equilibrium. So a short-run equilibrium is where your short-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand curves intersect. A long-run equilibrium occurs where that equilibrium level of output, Y1, as I've drawn it here, just so happens to equal potential because the vertical long or the long-run aggregate supply curve is vertical at that point. Okay, so short-run equilibrium, where short-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand intersect. Long-run equilibrium, the intersection of those first two curves occurs when, where output equals potential. In other words, all three curves intersect at the same point, or at the same spot. All right, so why is this equilibrium stable? Well, it's, we think it's stable because the labor market's going to adjust to ensure real GDP gets driven to potential in the long run. All right, so let me explain that. Here, I'm going to have to go ahead and draw an economy that's not initially in equilibrium. So here's my long run aggregate supply curve. So I want to draw an economy that originally has an equilibrium GDP that's less than potential. So here's potential, and I know I want the equilibrium to be somewhere less than potential. All right, well, one way I can do that is, oops, I labeled that wrong. This is short-run aggregate supply. This is my short-run aggregate supply curve, and it's going to be my initial one, so I'll go ahead and call that short-run aggregate supply curve two. Now, I want the initial level of output to be less than potential, which means I want the aggregate demand curve to intersect at something like, oops, aggregate demand curve here. So the economy is at point A. Here's my price level. Here's the actual level of output. Okay, Y1. All right. Now I claim there's a built-in tendency for the economy to return to equilibrium, meaning to e return to the long-run equilibrium. Okay, why is that? Well, if you remember from when we talked about unemployment before, if output equals potential, oh, I don't even want to write Y1 because that's not the case. If output equals potential, then the unemployment rate equals the natural rate. So remember, when uh, the economy's, when, uh, uh, when labor is fully employed, in other words, you're at the natural rate of unemployment, then uh, you're at potential output. Okay, so if, on the other hand, output is less than potential, like we're going to have here, then firms don't as need as many workers, and so the unemployment rate is going to be above uh, the natural rate. Some people sometimes find that confusing because you have outputs below potential, and they want to say instinctively the unemployment rate has to be less than the natural rate. But that's not quite right, or that's in fact not right, because if output's below potential, then that means firms don't have to hire as many workers, and if they lay off workers, then the unemployment rate's going to be higher than the natural rate. All right, so if output is at, say, Y1, then the unemployment rate, U1, is going to be greater than the natural rate of unemployment. 
Okay. Well, that's going to lead to something important. Namely, think about what's going on in labor market negotiations. If workers are scarce, then firms don't, I mean, if workers are in abundance because there's a high level of unemployment, firms don't have difficulty finding them, okay? In fact, it's, con it's workers who have to compete for the scarce job. So workers competing for scarce jobs bid down the nominal wage. And here you have to think not just in terms of nominal wages, but it's the compensation package in general. Health care benefits, uh, maybe you know retirement benefits, other types of fringe benefits like um, benefits to send uh, workers to oh, uh, get advanced degrees, the length of vacation time, sick days, personal days, all that stuff. So the entire labor market contract, um, you have to look at the entire thing. Well, if unemployment rate is relatively high, it's very easy for firms to attract workers, and they might say, you know what, given the current environment, we don't have to give people signing bonuses, or we don't have to give them a 5% raise to keep them, so we're not going to. And as a result, nominal wages will get bid down, if you're thinking in terms of nominal wages as just being broadly nominal compensation. Well, if you think back to what we said about the short Niagara supply curve, this decrease costs of production. Okay. Well, if cost of production fall, then greedy profit-maximizing firms are going to want to go ahead and produce more output. Okay, And how did we represent that before? We represented it by shift of the short Niagara supply curve. So the short Niagara supply curve is going to start shifting down this way. Now, when will the shifting stop? So we've got a decrease in the price level, and we've got real GDP rising. When is all the shifting going to stop? It's going to stop where the unemployment rate is, or when the unemployment rate is again equal to the natural rate, which will occur when the output is equal to potential, meaning it's going to stop when we hit point B. Short run air supply curve 2. When the economy is at point B, where output's back at potential, and the price level just so happens to fall into P2. Okay? So the decrease in the cost of production, and let me end up erasing this, the decrease in the cost of production causes the short run Irish supply curve to shift right. To short run Irish supply curve too. So you think about it, the labor market is adjusting. Okay? So the labor market is at the center of the adjustment story. If the economy is below potential, that means the unemployment rate is high. Firms have the bargaining strength, so workers competing for scarce jobs will bid down the nominal wage. Okay, and you have to think of nominal wage here broadly being total compensation. Well, if nominal wages fall, or nominal compensation falls, cost of production for firms fall, and cost of productions will shift the short run Niagara supply curve to the right. And this will continue until output's back equal to potential. And what's so special about output equaling potential? that's where the unemployment rate again equals the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, And the exact same story will work in reverse and you should work your way through that to make sure you understand it. If output were above potential, then the unemployment rate would below the, be below the natural rate. Workers are scarce, so firms are going to have to bid up nominal wages to attract them. That means bigger signing bonuses, bigger pay increases, better health care benefits or other fringe benefits, longer vacation times. That drives up the cost of productions for firms, so the short run average supply curve will shift to the right in, or um, to the left in that example. Okay? So those are the two examples that you need to go ahead and work through. One, a decrease in cost of production shifting the short run average supply curve to the right. Two, an increase in cost of production shifts the short run average supply curve to the left.